Now we would like to start opening the podium. My name is Hiroshi Watanabe, the president of the Japanese Society of Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics. It's my great honor to chair this opening symposium with Professor Matsuki. Today, we welcome four distinguished guest speakers here, and the first two presentations will be chaired by Dr. Matsuki. Uh, we have four speakers, and to, uh, each speaker will deliver a 20 minutes talk, and uh, the last part, we have a 20 minutes discussion period. I'll introduce first speakers, uh, Dr. Makoto Suematsu, uh, the president of Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development, so-called AMED, A-M-E-D. I'll briefly introduce Dr. Semas. Dr. Semas graduated from <coughs> Keio University School of Medicine in 1983, and then uh, enrolled in a postgraduate school and the University of California, San Diego, and he has been successfully assigned for the uh, leader of Global Center for Excellence for Life Sciences, Human Metabolic System Biology from MTS. <coughs> and he has been uh, Dean of School of Medicine at Keio University and leader of JST, Elato, and the same as Gas Biology Project. And uh, from, uh, since 2015, he was the first founding president of the AMED. His main research interests are gas biology and medicine, microcircuity, physiology, development of amazing MS spectrometry, and exploring disease specific biomarkers, molecules by metabolism. Today, he will talk about the mission of the AMD, global data sharing, and medical R&D. Dr. Seymour, please. Thank you very much uh, for giving me such a wonderful opportunity uh, to speak about our organization. And uh, regarding the translational research, uh, that there are many uh, different uh, players uh, or stakeholders, and uh, they have to cooperate each other to uh, get a, a nice outcome. However, uh, there might be uh, millions of obstacles to slow down uh, these translational processes. And one of such things is uh, difficulties in uh, data sharing. I would like to speak uh, about this problem and how to uh, tackle with uh, this. So let me introduce a very uh, impressive uh, terminology, that is a balkanization. The definition uh, goes like this, it is the situation, the hardly communicating each other, whereas the both are in the same ground. That's a problem. And uh, many, many years ago, uh, maybe uh, some senior people uh, knew it. Uh, you can see in the left side, uh, th uh, there, that is uh, Mohammed Ali, uh, who is a champion of the boxing. And uh, in the right side, you can see the Antonio Inoki. Uh, he is now the congressman, but he used to be a professional wrestler and the world champion. And uh, they decided to uh, determine uh, which is stronger uh, without negotiation. And as a result, you know, the Muhammad Ali knows the, if it, uh, he was laid down uh, in the ground, uh, the su uh, three seconds is good enough to kill him for Antonio Inoki. On the other hand, Antonio Inoki knows that just one punch is good enough to kill the Inoki by Mohammed Ali, because uh, his punch is so strong. As a result, so without negotiation, uh, Inoki is laid down all over uh, the uh, round, and uh, Mohammed Ali just escaped from Antonio Inoki, and uh, finally they never interact with each other. And uh, such situation is very similar to the difficulties in the translational researches. And first of all, so I, I, I don't like to go in detail uh, how uh, the balkanization occurs in uh, Japanese uh, medical research and development. And you can see here that just one pair, the sequencers versus physician. The sequencers does not mean the name of the machine, 
but those who are handling the next generation sequencer to figure out ATGC and thinking about uh, anything else. On the other hand, the physician, so they confronted with a difficulty to uh, cope with a patient and the patient's family and no time to enjoy the science. So there is a balkanization. The scientist versus bureaucrat, I don't like to go in detail, I, I suffered. And the industry versus university, that's another headache. And the university versus university, that is more serious. <laughs> and finally, if we take into, uh, if we pay attention to the medicine, medicine is a very specific field of science which, which is totally different from other sciences. So let me think about our deep space science. They use the just one telescope on the orbit of this planet and collected the whole data of the deep space science and share these data among the thousands of uh, uh, astronomists uh, in order to figure out how our universe is, was born. It is a data sharing. The why such data sharing does not occur in the medicine? Because there is a many, many Darth Vader type professor and a full exert force to collect the, all the data from the millions of hospitals and never acknowledge the effort of these physicians and just publish and publish and publish and no medical peers. That's another problem. So, and uh, when the AMED was born, I fully suffered from the, you know, uh, there are different type of bureaucrat. The three ministries, the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, and the Ministry of Industries. So they are utilizing a Japanese language and the Japanese currency, but unfortunately, they have a totally different discipline and rules. So they never cooperate each other. So, the, when the Prime Minister Abe asked me uh, to organize AMET, so uh, the mission is to integrate the three different ministries, the red, blue, yellow. But it seems very difficult for me. Uh, I'm uh, one of the biochemists. From the biochemical viewpoint, it is something like a uh, uh, burnout, amino acid and glucose and lipid without TCA cycle and the mitochondrial electron transport. So without this, we cannot get the ATP. So maybe perhaps our mission of AMED is to catalyze three different substrates to galvanize the medical R&D processes. So uh, within uh, my talk time, uh, I would like to just mention one thing, how uh, we can overcome the, the very serious uh, balkanization uh, particularly in the field of rare and undiagnosed diseases. And we are tackling the many difficulties, not only rare disease, but also cancer. But uh, in orphan disease field, uh, we are tackling how we can facilitate the global data sharing. Uh, we have a, a 50 years history of uh, the NAMBIO, uh, NAMBIO means are difficult to treat. The NAMBIO uh, research based on the law uh, established by the Ministry of Health. And the first we pay attention to the outpatient department based uh, the people. Uh, there are so many undiagnosed people and uh, uh, there is no uh, definitive uh, strategy to uh, treat these patients. And uh, in order to uh, make a registry of undiagnosed disease, uh, that we uh, make uh, uh, eligible criteria. The one is the, the, the patient should be undiagnosed for s more than six months. And uh, we have two uh, co uh, conditions. The one is uh, there, there should be the multiple organ symptoms. As you know, the just one gene is good enough to control not only brain, but also bone and the hematopoietic systems. So the disruption of only a single gene should cause the different series of phenotype. Or uh, uh, another criteria is a genetic disorder uh, suspect. That means a family history. 
And based on this, such eligible criteria, that we try to uh, solve the question. And I'm sorry to show you the very uh, complicated figures. Uh, that is uh, just one of the example in which we can see there's so many uh, variant uh, based on the whole exome analysis. As you know, the exome analysis is just a one percentage of the whole genome. But the exome analysis uh, works very well uh, in order to determine uh, such patients. However, if we use a bioinformatics and a previous Japanese database and the judgment by the physician, still we cannot determine the single uh, variant which is responsible for the diseases. In order to make a perfect case matching, we need another one patient at least. And if there is any matching of the variant between the two uh, different patients, so we can say something about that this might be a pathogenic variant. That is a story. But fortunately, uh, after the huge earthquake in Tohoku, the, we established the Tohoku Medical Megabank under the uh, initiative of the Tohoku uh, University School of Medicine. And uh, they provided over 4,000 Japanese control variant uh, data in uh, the two years ago. And then the such data sharing causes an uh, 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 increase in the ability to screen up uh, the pathogenic variant. And I would like to show you just one case. Uh, that is a very first successful case matching uh, among the Japanese patients. And you can see patient one and, uh, who suffered from a developmental disorder together with a hemorrhagic tendency. And uh, the platelet count is going down. But more importantly, so if we carefully see the smear uh, sample, you can see the uh, giant platelet. Uh, with unknown origin. And she also, uh, she is also, uh, also suffering the curved finger and the swollen legs, and the uh, uh, parents are, are perfectly normal. And when we show up uh, this phenotype series in the first meeting of uh, uh, our program, uh, IRUD, this is an initiative on rare and undiagnosed disease. So fortunately, we can find out uh, the very similar case in Osaka, and uh, that they suffered the very uh, similar series of phenotype. And after the exome sequencing, so we can successfully uh, determine the CDC42, and that this molecule is very famous in the brain science because it is responsible for the normal formation of the, the synaptic uh, interaction but uh, only few people know this uh, molecule is also expressed in a megakaryocyte, and this my, uh, disruption of this gene might, be, might, uh, uh, might cause the giant platelet, actually. So the, what AMED is challenging now is how to facilitate the data sharing among the different hospitals or different pay, uh, uh, clinics. And I would like to show you just the outcome uh, within a, a recent uh, two years. And uh, we are having the uh, over 3,500 uh, registered families already. Uh, and uh, we determined, uh, fortunately, there are 17 uh, families that indicate uh, 17 different new diseases and uh, determine their 17 uh, new genes responsible for diseases. And also interestingly, that during these processes, uh, we can, uh, by chance, uh, had a very good opportunity to make a two case matching between the foreign countries. One is in United States, another one is uh, Lithuania. So from now, uh, we need to uh, think about how we can cooperate uh, among the different countries. So the N of one patient who are waiting for the second case, the, we are having the uh, record of the 100 uh, families already. And the such successful rate of the exome sequencing is just a 34 percentage. And the many scientists uh, said, so please give us the budget for the full genome sequencing, whole genome sequencing, 
But maybe uh, we never go this. Maybe we can go to the transcriptome analysis and uh, how uh, that we can understand, uh, uh, we can facilitate the uh, discovery of diseases. And another very important effort is uh, making a central IRB system. And as you know, the Japan is famous because uh, we have uh, uh, eight million different gods, uh, which uh, Jewish people never believe. And actually, the IRBs are so many, and we are having uh, over 3,000 different IRB. It is another headache. And because of this, regarding this IRAD program, we have just one IRB to uh, make a cooperation with uh, 483 ho different hospitals in, in Japan. We have uh, 80 uh, medical school hospital, so that means uh, which include the private uh, clinical hospitals and the regional core hospitals, not only Imperial uh, University and, or uh, national centers. That is good. And uh, as I mentioned, the Tohoku University uh, kindly provided the rare variant data very nicely. And as a result, uh, that we have our uh, patients who used to be undiagnosed and who are now diagnosed. And uh, such uh, patient goes to the over 800 within uh, six months. So IRAD Exchange facilitate nationwide case matching among the many hospitals. And then we decided to make up a collaboration with NIH. NIH is so huge. But also, uh, we are having the collaboration with Lithuania and the UK uh, whatsoever. So this is one of the uh, example uh, of the case matching, uh, apparent case matching between NIH and IRUD. But in this case, when we go to the genetic uh, analysis, Interestingly, the patient uh, with uh, uh, such phenotypes in ILAD, you can see the disruption of this uh, enzyme to produce the dermatin 2 sulfate uh, is a Japanese patient, and the NIH case is a terminal uh, enzyme disruption. And uh, in case of uh, lithuanium uh, collaboration, uh, they have uh, uh, only uh, 3 million uh, uh, demographic population, and furthermore, the family history was totally destroyed uh, at the uh, time of uh, uh, revolution in 1991, uh, escaping from USSR. The, everything is terminated. And because of this, the, there is uh, no record of the, the family history, and that highly disturbed the diagnosis for the children. And we decided to collaborate with them and uh, making a very uh, 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 interesting, uh, the very uh, remarkable number of the uh, case matching uh, between the Japanese database. And uh, finally, the aim to join. Uh, uh, we are very happy to join the World Cup to share the variants for diagnostic competition and cooperation uh, from this year. And although the, the size of the data is still small, uh, that we provided a very uh, rare Asian uh, inform, uh, genetic informatics to uh, such alliance. And uh, finally, uh, ILAD, uh, we would like to uh, empower uh, this program, uh, ILAD, in order to facilitate the therapeutics, because as you know, uh, mostly the 97 percentage of the, the rare diseases cannot be cured. And we really need the new uh, uh, therapy uh, for these patients and the families. So how we can overcome such uh, obstacle for the data sharing? If we pay attention to the present situation in uh, uh, prospective cohort studies in this country. So you can see the many, many uh, pros prospective cohorts. But the problem is, you know, the color is different. If you see the difference of the color, that means they never cooperate each other. The blue one cooperate with the blue one, and the orange one cooperate with the orange one. And they never know each other. And what, how uh, we can overcome this? 
And if we count the overall uh, number of the, uh, the Japanese people uh, who participate in such cohort, uh, it goes to uh, the 360,000 uh, uh, people. It's huge. It's good enough to make a, a preclinical registry for dementia, for example, but cooperation and the data sharing is necessary. So finally, I would like to uh, thank uh, the, these outstanding uh, Australian researchers, uh, the Dr. Tudor Grozer, uh, who can provide his excellent software for data sharing for Japanese society, and uh, he never published this software, just to share his software. It's, it's amazing. And another guy is uh, Gareth Bainham, uh, who contributed to the improvement of the uh, patient archive made in Australia and transferred to IRAD Exchange for us. And also, I thank the, the Dr. Hugh Dawkins in West Australia uh, to collaborate uh, with Japan. So finally, we need to share for patients. And uh, uh, the, I would like to call uh, the very important philosophy, uh, that is, uh, no, man, uh, no man is an island, entire of itself. Every man is a piece of a continent, a part of the main. Any man's death diminishes me because I'm involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know uh, for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Uh, this is a, a poem uh, by John Donne. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Seymour. Now we understand AMED is a very different, quite different uh, uh, innovative uh, system compared to all traditional Japanese governmental uh, system. Thank you very much. <laughs>